Hi, this is Filmo Recap. Today we're gonna recap a movie called Blindness inspired by a novel written by Jose Saramago. But before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. There is a book called The Psychology of Crowds by Gustave Lubon. He talks about the behavior of humanity in the heart of the crowd. There is a chapter in this book that talks about the total intelligence of humanity in the group, which is very, very less than the normal rate for an individual human being. What happens when a group of people isolate themselves in a large building while they are all blind? None of them knows each other. None of them were blind before. The other common thing is that they are all afraid. What will happen when a small group of people are driven by fear? This is what we will find out in today's movie. The movie begins in a busy city. Suddenly, a Japanese man inside a car is having difficulties with his vision. All the other drivers urge him to drive so that the other cars can cross the intersection. A bald man knocks on the person's car window to confront him about the delay that he has caused. The Japanese man says that he suddenly goes blind and cannot see anything with his eyes. Panicking, he tells the bald man that something is flooding his eyes. A Samaritan then offers help to drive him home for his security. While in the car, the blind Japanese describes his vision as something very light, seemingly like he's swimming in a pool filled with milk. The Samaritan finds the information very interesting because he thinks that blindness is more of a darker color. Not long after, the Samaritan drops the blind person in the middle of the road with no help. This reveals that the Samaritan is originally a car thief. Fortunately, a stranger offers help for the poor blind man. The stranger then guides him towards his home safely. Unfortunately, the blind Japanese's wife is still not home. Later, the man's wife comes home and witnesses a broken glass. She sees her husband bleeding. The blind Japanese tells his wife that he's blind and cannot see anything all of a sudden. So the wife takes their contact book to find an eye specialist. Both of them then go outside and book a taxi to go to an optical clinic. Interestingly, when the doctors check on him, they do not see anything wrong with his eyes. The doctors do not know why the man cannot see anything but light. In the next scene, a random person in the middle of the night also suddenly goes blind without any reason. This reveals that the sudden blindness condition could be a sickness that is contagious and could lead to an epidemic. Curious about the bizarre case, the doctor talks to his wife about the weird sickness. He theorizes that it could be more neurological as he did not see anything wrong with the blind Japanese's eyes. In the next scene, a shaded girl is introduced to the movie. As she strolls around the city, she books a taxi to a hotel. She explains that she could not take her shades off because of her doctor's advice. She suddenly catches the disease and goes blind. As she panics, the man she's with abandons her. In the morning, the doctor tells his wife that he suddenly cannot see anything. He theorizes that he was infected when he checked the blind Japanese in his clinic. The wife touches him and says everything will be all right. However, the doctor realizes that if the sickness is contagious with physical touch, his wife could get it too. Hours have passed, and the doctor remains blind. Tragically, more citizens around the city are now getting blind. The sickness is now spreading like an epidemic and causing massive hysteria among the people. The health ministry is shocked by the sudden tragic incidents. In the next scene, the blind doctor is carried by ambulance to get him to the nearest hospital where he will be isolated with the other patients. Because of the sudden cases, all medical staff wear protective gear to protect themselves from infection. The government then declares that the country is in a state of crisis. Everyone is now aware of the epidemic of blindness. The government also says they would quarantine every infected person to prevent the sickness from spreading. The doctor's wife pretends to be blind so she can accompany her husband in the quarantine zone. For some reason, the doctor's wife is not infected by the sickness yet. As time passes, people arrive in the quarantine zone on time. With no vision, the infected people familiarize themselves with the pathways of the quarantine zones with the help of the doctor's wife without telling them she's blind. The next morning, more infected people come to the quarantine zone. The blind Japanese is sad to see that his wife is also infected with the sickness. Once again, they are reunited, but both cannot see anything now. Still, both of them are happy to touch each other's body again. The doctor and his wife try to go outside and seek help. However, the guards are strict with the rules. As the doctor asks for help, the guards do not care. The guards then point their guns at the couple. 
They warn that they will shoot them dead if they do not go back. The couple has no choice but to return. Days have passed, and the doctor's wife is still not infected with the sickness. This reveals that she could be immune to the disease, but why? Saramago points out in the novel that the wisdom of the only human being who has not suffered from blindness, who is the doctor's wife, is an indication that in the dark ages there must be at least a spark of light. And some say that because of the kindness of the wife, which we will notice later, is the reason for her not becoming blind. In the next scene, more and more people are coming to the blind ward to quarantine. Even in a tragic situation, the infected people still build a sense of solidarity. The Japanese couple talks beside the fire. However, the wife is not willing to listen to any stories. The next day, the man with an eye patch brings a radio to the ward. He then calls every infected person so that he can update what is happening outside. He also says that according to the reports, hundreds of people have been infected already and all are experiencing the same symptoms. All they see is the color white. Moreover, the World Health Sector is now researching a cure. However, it is ineffective and the whole city is in massive hysteria. To find peace, the man plays. Music to comfort everyone in the ward. In the next scene, the military comes to the ward to organize the infected people. The military warns all infected people that they have permission to shoot if they do not obey the rules. At the same time, a blind person who needs guidance unintentionally goes out of the line. As a reaction, the heartless guard takes his gun and shoots the poor guy to death. This causes chaos in the whole building. Later, the infected people request a shovel from the authorities. The authorities say that only one person could go out and get it. The doctor's wife goes out of the building and pretends to be blind as she gets near the shovel. Annoyed by the guards, she flashes the middle finger toward them. One of the guards is shocked and starts to wonder if the doctor's wife is blind or not. To manage the dead people in the ward, the doctor suggests that each person should help bury the bodies outside. He confronts Ward 3 to discuss fair shares of food rationing. However, the people from the other ward just mock him and do not agree with his suggestions. In the next scene, the car thief from earlier confronts the doctor's wife because he thinks she is not blind. Still, the wife continues with her acting and does not admit it. The doctor's wife cries heavily and has an emotional breakdown with everything happening to them. The isolation turns from a clean, neat place to a total dump after every room is full and due to the lack of food and water, people didn't care about the hygiene at all, they shits everywhere and not only that. With the thought that everyone is blind, they stopped wearing any cloth. The wife tried to deal with all this, tried to convince them to keep their hygiene but to no avail and that's when she begins to break down and even after that, she became distant with her husband who was cheating on her and when she found out, she wasn't even mad. The car thief tried to even harass the sunglasses girl and by mistake, she stabbed him in the leg and due to the lack of antibiotics, the wound became even worse and the man is near his death. The car thief then carries himself outside the building to catch the guard's attention. One of the guards goes down the stairs to check the situation. However, when he sees the car thief near him, he immediately takes his gun and shoots the poor guy to death. Here begins the most famous problem for all humanity. Division and stupidity. The newly hailed king of War 3 takes the microphone and tells everyone a new rule. If they want to eat, they will have to pay. He takes his gun and says that their ward is in charge of the food, and if they do not agree, he will kill them. He describes it as something like a store. He says that anything, like electronic devices, jewelry, and materials, could be the payment for food. People in Ward 1 has no choice but to give their last possessions to the other ward just so they can have food. The distribution of food depends on the value of the payment. The doctor complains about receiving only two boxes. He also discovers that one person from Ward 3 is born blind, unlike the rest. However, as he complains, the king of Ward 3 gets angry and attempts to shoot him if he will not leave as soon as possible. With a food shortage, the people from Ward 1 are forced to share a meal between two people. The doctor blames himself for not being able to stand up to the king of Ward 3. The king of Ward 3 realizes that the other wards have no more things to give, which is why they devise a new plan. He demands women from the other wards to offer sex in exchange for food. After all the debates in Ward 1, women eventually volunteered to be abused, just so they could get food and survive. Not long after, all the women gather as they prepare themselves for the deed. 
Not long after, the men from the other wards gather them in one room. The Japanese girl is trembling as she feels the hands of the men touching her skin. The other women accept their fate and allow the greedy men to abuse their bodies. The night continues to pass as the greedy men satisfy themselves at the expense of the women's bodies and souls. The next morning, the women return to Ward 1, demoralized and taken advantage of. The men from Ward 1 feel guilt as they can feel the women's dismay. The women pay respect to one of their colleagues who was abused and beaten to death last night. As the men from Ward 3 continue to abuse the women, the doctor's wife Cowden just stand without nothing to do so she goes to the room for revenge. She grabs her scissors, goes near the ward king, and stabs him in the neck, making him die deservingly. After learning about the attack, one of the men from Ward 3 takes the gun and threatens to shoot at the doctor's wife. The man says that Ward 3 will give no more food to Ward 1 from now on. Still, the doctor's wife retaliates by saying that if they do not give them food, she will kill one person in Ward 3 every day. After finding out what happened, the doctor fears war will emerge if the other ward seeks revenge. Sick of her husband's defeatist attitude, the doctor's wife just leaves the area and gathers the food instead. After that, the people from Ward 1 set up a barricade in case the other ward attacks them. Some people say they need to find out who killed the ward king and offer that person to the other ward as a peace offering. But the man with an eye patch asserts that if the other ward does not give them food, they should get it forcibly. After hearing some people agree, the doctor says they should raise their hands, but he realizes they are all blind and cannot see each other. Instead, he suggests that people who agree with the plan should discuss their strategy. In the middle of the night, the group sticks together as they plan to ambush Ward 3 to get the food. However, they stop moving when they smell smoke. This reveals that one of the abused women had already sneaked into Ward 3 and set the room on fire, leaving many casualties and causing massive hysteria among the blind. Meanwhile, to get away from the fire, all the people go out of the building for their security. At the same time, the doctor's wife screams and seeks help from the guards. However, no one is responding. Not long after, the blind people find their way out of the building as they realize that the guards have abandoned the area. It reveals that the city is in shambles and society has collapsed since the blindness epidemic. To look for food, the doctor's wife leads the group in finding temporary shelter and a potential food supply. As the doctor and his wife stroll around the city, the landscape reveals that most of the population has perished and all people are now blind. Fortunately, the doctor's wife stumbles into a grocery store and gathers as much food as possible. She even finds the hidden basement under the store and sees many food stocks, enough to feed all of her friends. Not eating for days, she immediately grabs raw meat and eats it without hesitation. After eating, she takes a plastic bag and puts in as much food as she can bring for her friends. However, the people from the grocery store could smell the meat from the bags. They try to get hold of her and take all the food. Luckily, the doctor hears the commotion and helps his wife safely leave the store. After stopping for a while, the doctor gets back to the store to retrieve the things he left behind. At the same time, dismay is seen on the doctor's wife's face as she sees the situation of her beloved country. Still, she finds peace when a random dog approaches her and kisses her cheeks. Suddenly, the rain starts pouring and the doctor's wife reaches the sanctuary safely. Excited to get back, the couple goes through the rain to find their way back to their friends. Meanwhile, the people enjoy the rain as they feel the drops touch their skin after being imprisoned inside a building for a long time. Even though everything is terrible, they find a way to smile when the rain pours. The next morning, the group gathers to find a better sanctuary for them. Both the doctor and his wife welcome all their friends to their home. The women find peace as they go to bathe together and talk about their previous, not blind life. They laugh and giggle as they clean themselves for the first time in a while. At the same time, the man with an eye patch says that the relationship they built after their blindness is very precious. The night passes as the people appreciate each other and their struggles. The next morning, the Japanese man, the first blind person to get the sickness, suddenly gets his vision back. This reveals that the first person got sick is the first person to be cured and eventually, everyone will get their visions back as the disease is only temporary. The things happening to the Japanese man gives everyone hope that they will eventually get their visions back. 
they can see each other and the beautiful world once again and that's how the movie ends thanks for watching see you soon and goodbye